Hey, welcome back to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome. Greetings and salutations, all you lovely viewers, <laughs> listeners, whoever you are, wherever you are. Uh, as always, you know where to find us, uh, the podcast app, SoundCloud, YouTube, the general places. Yes. Uh, and all of our social links down there if you want to get in contact, get connected, um, stay tuned for giveaways, stuff like that. Stay tuned for a website, which we have also started working oh, on. Hopefully that'll be exciting. up very, very soon within the next week or two. And that way you guys can start reading articles that we post, uh, as well as we'll probably try and post all the videos over there as well. Um, and with that, we are going to do very briefly a quick little update. You may have noticed that this episode is not... A Monday episode. No, um, nor did we have one. Yeah, so the deal Aww. is basically um, we did sort of a rethink. Um, and we do this every once in a while just to update on stats, update on how things are going, uh, and just make sure we're up to date on everything. And so what we found was uh, there was sort of a lack in quality on some of our videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, um, had, a, we had a come to Jace moment. Um, <laughs> and we realized that you like that yeah that was, that was good, good. That was cool. good. Uh, we realized that <laughs> it might be easier um and it might be better for us to yeah. put out one video yeah a week where in that one video we we can, cram we can a bunch cover of kind of everything yeah is the goal yeah. um and with that that lets us do a little bit more editing on the video hopefully do a little bit more of a quality product yes. for you guys push, um, push a a cleaner final product yeah um, more behind the scenes things because more wizard of oz stuff yeah yeah because um what it amounts to guys is a lot of times so, so for instance if we have an episode going up monday a lot of times we have to record it obviously on sunday, sunday. um yeah. which is fine we can do that and we have been doing that it works mm -hmm. out just fine mm -hmm. however there's no time literally no time for yeah. editing uh, because it takes so long to export these videos, hence them being very long and things like that. Um, right, 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 and so we just don't have the time to edit. Right. Um, so hopefully this will sort of solve some of that issue. Um, we do plan on having some supplemental content. Yes. Um, if you have been paying attention, the Monday should have been our first episode of crack -a packs which I've started. We're doing that Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So basically anytime you would have gotten a podcast episode, instead you get two minutes. You're welcome. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, that does not go on the podcast. So. No, it does. <laughs> You're welcome. Thing. <laughs> Got you. Um, in addition, uh, like we already mentioned with the website and things like that, we're hoping to start do article, doing articles. Yes, um, I'm excited about that. You're really excited. You're going to start doing a lot of those. Yeah. So if you if you think I act like an idiot, wait until you read what I write. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be great. Um, I am nervous. Pumped. No, I'm pumped. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a. Uh, we get to kind of test our magic clout a little bit with, mm -hmm. with articles and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and maybe uh, discuss and explore some things about the game that you might not have considered, we might not have considered. Yeah. Uh, it's a good time to flex our magic muscle brains. Yes. Um, and at the start of this, there isn't going to be a timeline for when we're going to get articles out. Right. Um, right. This is to sort of, that. yeah, this is yeah. If that's first, you're first round. So we're just getting used mm -hmm. to things. Um, but with all that being said, we will plan on having a schedule out for you guys uh, as soon as we can possibly get one. Indeed. So that being said, though, these episodes of the podcast are now going to be once a week. Uh, we're going to sort of shove everything into one episode. However, um, this sort of allows us to it just streamline the, the whole process yeah. and make it a little, a little bit easier. So hopefully that's OK with you guys. Mm -hmm. If you have a differing opinion, let us know. Uh, but yeah. If you like the new format, um, hopefully it'll be a better quality product for you, and yeah. overall just a better time. So, um, with some things are some things are leaving, some things are staying. Um, deck techs are staying. Yeah, uh, albeit a little bit different. We'll get into that in a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're keeping uh, a main topic, a main content piece, sort of thing. Yep. Um, and anything else we really. Tur tournament coverage is still going to be in yeah. there. Um, in fact, we'll have some for the uh, Grand Prix Birmingham and this episode uh, very briefly. We're also going to still be doing a random card of the day. One thing we're not doing mm -hmm. anymore, which I'm a little sad about, but I yeah. think it makes sense, the Kiki Weekly. Yeah, we're having to say goodbye to the Kiki Weekly only because, um, to be honest, sort of letting you guys in behind the scenes, a lot of times we would write an episode, you know, a day or two in advance, and then we go to record, and Have then it would be like, oh, crap, we forgot the Kiki Weekly. Yeah. Um, 
as much as we enjoy that, um, and we may obviously bring it back at some point, it's it's not off the table completely, but for a little while now, we're not going to do that. Right. So, um, yeah. Again, this was a shift for quality being yeah. our main focus. So uh, we didn't want to include anything that felt rushed, really. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of the first thing we brought up. So. Yeah. Nope. Bummer. That, bummer. But it's gone. Sorry, guys. It's, um, times are changing. It's going to be a, a busy season yeah. coming up. Winter. Sorry. Winter is coming. Oh, God. <laughs> We had to prepare the night's watch. All right. Anyway, Let's guys, scar. really quickly, let's go over the show outline for this uh, just to get you guys yeah. used to it. We're going to start off every episode with our card of the day, obviously. Heck yeah. This week or this episode, we will have a deck tech, a vintage deck tech. Mm -hmm. uh, we plan to do a deck tech every time. Uh, we're also continuing our breakdown of the formats as our main topics. Right. So this week is vintage. Um, we also have modern coverage of Grand Prix mm -hmm. Birmingham. And then our sponsor, Crack a Pack, and then we also have a giveaway going on. If you haven't checked it out on Instagram, we recommend you do so. It's three packs of Hour of Devastation. All you have to do, yeah. follow us, tag us, and repost uh, the original post, and you'll be entered to win. That's all you yep. got to do. Uh, winners will be chosen in two days on Friday. So just keep that in mind. Um, Indeed. So, yeah. That being said, let's get right into it with the random card of the day. Excited. Uh, this is always, this is my favorite. Christening we, I the mean, new <laughs> format. Yeah, yeah I, I like, like it this. too. Uh, three, two, one. Ancient, Ancient silverback. Uh, four and two green for a six-five ape. Uh, with one, you can pay one green and regenerate it. Uh, limited all star. Yeah, I don't hate it. Um, so really, this looks to me like a <clears throat> kind of probably one of the green bombs for yeah. M. What is this? Fifteen, right? Fifteen. M fifteen. Yeah. Um, it was also in Urza's Destiny originally, mm. uh, seventh edition and ninth edition. Okay. But yes, this it it's great and limited. I yeah, mean, it's just a bomb, right? Exactly. Like, I mean, there are better things you can put on something yeah. other than regenerate. However, regenerate regenerate for one is that's really cheap. It's nice, which means like, you can do it multiple times. Also, yeah, I like trample on my bombs. I like hex proof. Those yeah. things have value higher than regenerate personally. Yeah. However, like <laughs> I'm not mad at all if I see this in a pack. <laughs> not um, at all. This even in kind of a worst pack has potential for first pick right it's, i would say so i mean a six five is like a six five for six is decent stats right yeah. like that's pretty good mm -hmm. um and then the ability to regenerate well like you said it's not as premium as something like first strike or trample or something like that it's pretty good still right oh, yeah. like Absolutely. if you've got open mana you just it's very hard to kill this mm -hmm. Um, so I really like it. Uh, it's definitely a bomb in green at the uncommon slot. That's great because yep. that means you do have a decent chance of seeing it in a draft, um, seeing so many packs as you do. So yeah, I think definitely um, if the rare is a bust in a pack, yeah, this could be the flagship green card that you want to start off mm -hmm. a draft with. It's not a bad card at all. No, and I think it's easy if you're in kind of an aggroish deck to splash in green, not yeah. splash, but like tech in the green. I mean, yeah, for um, sure. Yeah, no, nothing wrong with that. Nope, I think. Cool. Yeah. Well, nice. Good job. Moving into our deck tech. Um, so as always, we're still going to continue to do the deck techs. Um, instead of doing two where we have the community deck tech and then our own, we're only going to be doing the community deck tech to sort of trim back on time a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully bridge out some of this content. This week was obviously vintage, and we had uh, Dredge suggested twice on Instagram. Yeah. I didn't actually write down who stated, who uh, suggested it, so I apologize. But yeah, two people suggested vintage, which meant we had to do it. Yeah. Um, I, I also mean, just like Dredge. Yeah, Dredge is fun um, and deceptively simple for how yeah. good it is. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if it's a viable strategy in vintage, it has to be good. Yeah. It has to stand up to the to the mean nasty storm combo. <laughs> light steel decks uh, okay uh that being said let's go into it um so vintage dredge is pretty simple arguably it can be easier to pilot than other dredge versions vanilla dredge of course being one which is really only played in modern i think uh yes i believe yeah. that's correct um so this is it, it works pretty easy you can win by turn three a good portion of the time which isn't bad for a vintage deck you know that's um yeah, I mean, that's sort of on the, like, normally turn two, I would say, is, like, for a combo deck where you want to be. Um, this isn't yeah. necessarily a combo deck. It's more just straight-up aggro, so it makes sense ah, that it's one turn behind. I, I think it's kind of a combo deck. It feels like a combo deck, for yeah. sure. I mean... It's, it's kind of reaches that gray area. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, but let's talk about Dredge. So, the 
flagship cards in this deck. Um, there's really only one. <laughs> Bazaar of Baghdad. Um, it runs four Bazaar of Baghdad, which is a land that says draw two cards, then discard <laughs> three cards. Do you see the price of Bazaar of Baghdad? I do. For anybody that wants to spend $800 on a piece of cardboard... This could Bizarre be yours. Of Baghdad is for you. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. But if pricey. you play it on, if you buy it online, it's seventy four cents. So, <laughs> da -da -da -da. Yeah. I love. Okay, really quickly, I want to highlight the price of this deck. Yeah, is so we're looking at this on MTG Top Eight. Right. So it gives you the paper version and then the online version. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at it in paper, it's between twenty six and thirty six hundred dollars, which is cheap for vintage. Uh, however. Yeah. However, if you want to go That's online with it, uh, two hundred and thirty dollars. It turns out seems pretty good. So it's this will nice. tie into our vintage breakdown on where you play vintage. Oh, buddy, <laughs> um, will it? But yeah, so <laughs> yeah, just, just keep that in mind. Throwing that out there. Uh, remember that as we talk a little later about the format. Uh, yes, this card <laughs> is expensive. Um, so yeah, uh, draw two <laughs> cards, then discard three cards. So dredge works. We eat, if you've heard us talk about. Um, modern sideboards ever. Um, we mentioned that you need to have Graf Digger, Graf Digger's Cage or um, Rest in Peace. Yes, or Leyline Relic or what have you. Um, this is why. So Dredge plays with the graveyard pretty much exclusively until it just swings and wins. Um, Bazaar lets you filter your deck and then also get your Dredgers in the graveyard, which is awesome. Yep. Um, and Bazaar Baghdad is really the best way to do that. Uh, it's all, this also runs lands like Darkmoor Salvage, Mana Confluence for any mana you need. Mana Confluence, pay one life, add a color. Uh, Undiscovered Paradise, add one mana of any color, then return it to your hand. Um, but the most important card, the most important land, above all, is Bazaar. Yeah. If you don't have Bazaar, uh, this deck is a lot slower. <laughs> um, so a, a writer for Gathering Magic said that if you don't have Bazaar of Baghdad in your hand... You mulligan. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many cards you have in your hand, you mulligan. <laughs> uh, which kind of speaks to the yeah. you know, the necessity. Uh, so let's talk about some creatures. Obviously, not every creature is going to have dredge, but every creature benefits from the graveyard or being put into the graveyard. Yeah. So uh, auto-include Bloodgast. Kind of makes sense. If you're going to put guys into the graveyard from your deck and you are going to play lands, you'll get every blood gas pack that's in there it's pretty sweet it's also worth noting this is sort of a combo with undiscovered paradise um Very that's true. part of why undiscovered paradise is in here because it gives you a landfall trigger every single mm -hmm. turn guaranteed yep. unless it's stripped from your hand or something somehow right. but um that or guarantees you the landfall yeah, yeah but but that being said yeah guarantees landfall and you're going to filter your deck pretty quickly so a lot of these will be in your yard mm -hmm. um this deck in particular has one copy of dragon lord uh Kolagon and one copy of <laughs> elish norn uh Elish Norn, really sweet. Um, but you really see her in in a lot of places that they think they'll run up against Mentor decks. Mm -hmm. And looking at this topic here, there are three. So <laughs> probably a great include. Um, Dragon Lord Colagon is an interesting one. It's reanimator target, which you have a few spells to reanimate things. Um, and it's just kind of a... It's just an unexpected include, really, in Dredge. Yeah. So it Colagon has flying in haste. Other creatures you control have haste. Whenever an opponent casts a creature or planeswalker spell with the same name as a card in his or her graveyard, that player loses ten life. Deal a ton of damage and give all of your stuff. Haste. Yeah, in the, in the mirror, this is probably exceptional. It's perfect. Yeah. Um, also, so I want to just slice in here. Yeah, it says nothing to do with dredge. Sorry, guys. Okay. I realized this week. So we did a cube this past weekend. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm not going to talk at length about it, but I went to very quickly pick up a few cards for the cube last minute. Mm -hmm. Elish Norn being one of them. I realized Elish Norn might be my favorite magic card. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Not necessarily for how good it is, although it's fantastic. Yes. Um, I really like the art. The art is amazing. It's one of my favorite pieces of art it's, in it magic. It was one of the best fat packs. Yeah. Elish Norn yeah. was. Sleeved. Car yeah. Elish Norn, that Also, it was foil, the one I bought, and I'm really stoked about oh, it. Nice. Nice, dude. Oh. It felt so good. <laughs> yeah, Elish Norn is a is a well designed card it in is. every aspect of the card. Yeah, yeah. Art, cost, effect, stats. It's it's perfect. super good. Yeah. So. It came from one of my favorite blocks too. So Yeah, yeah. New Mir Phyrexia. Yeah. Phyrexia was a really fun time. Yeah. Um but okay. Sorry, just slicing in there. I like it. It just kind of came up. Huh. <laughs> no, that's a great reason to love a magic card. For the I art. hate white too, just so everybody understands. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Ellis Storms is just my favorite. Definitely. Um, definitely 
beautiful card. I can't stop looking so at it. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about Dredgers. Dredger, um, the effect says, um, when you would draw a card, instead you may uh, put the top X cards, X being its dredge blank, uh, from your library into your graveyard, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. So you essentially, if you've milled it or if it's in your graveyard, you can quote unquote draw it. Yep. Sort of. It replaces a draw for a self mill. Um, so the engines for that, Grape Troll, of course, a playset. This is the biggest dredger. The best one. It benefits the most from things have, being in your yard, so mm-hmm. it's awesome. Uh, Golgari Thug. Uh, so it's kind of interesting. Um, when Golgari Thug dies, it pseudo reanimates. It puts a creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Yeah. So I guess it's not really reanimate, but you it's understand. It's interesting. Yeah, it's recursion. But... Uh, Icarid. Uh, I like Icarid because it's one of those recursion creatures, benefits from the graveyard as well, yeah. and you only see it really in Dredge. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of your end step, sack Icarid. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if Icarid's in your graveyard, you can exile a black creature in your graveyard uh, and then return it to the battlefield. So reanimator, reanimate itself is nice. Uh, Narcomoeba you see in this I deck. I love this card. It's so cool. Uh, <laughs> and it works exceptionally with Dredge and against Mill. Yeah. So 1-1 yeah. uh, one, one Flyer. When Narcomoeba is put into your graveyard from your library, you may put it onto the battlefield. It ends up just being a free 1-1 one, one flyer. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, it's that's nice. all it amounts to. Uh, Stinkweed Imp as well. Whenever Stinkweed Imp deals combat damage to a creature, destroy it. It's also got Dredge 5. Dredge 5. Yeah, it's a 1-2 on flyer. <laughs> um, sorry, let me clarify. Narcomoeba and Icarid do not have Dredge. Only, no, no. Uh, only the Thug, Grape Troll, Stinkweed, and that's it, actually. Yes. Yeah. There are different versions. Um, mm-hmm. I do want to mention that run things like Life from the Loam, um, which is also a dredger, and you can get sort of a soft lock with life. But um, because this one is in vintage and it's super, super hyper focused, I would say um, it really doesn't necessarily need that. Um, but right. it is uh, just a concern. Also, Dakmore Salvage is a dredger, which you mentioned mm-hmm. already, but that that sort of rounds out the full dredge package. Right. All right. So creatures rounded out. Uh, so going to instance and sorceries. Um, obviously, you're going to want to play some things with flashback because uh, a lot of these will hit your graveyard and you have no control over when they do it. Uh, so the first one we'll start with is Cabal Therapy. If I can find the cursor. <laughs> Found it. Uh, Cabal Therapy. Pretty nice. It's kind of like a combo break, the hand destruction. <coughs> it's a nice. It's a nice card. Yeah. So name an online card, the target <laughs> player reveals their hand, uh, You just disc- they discard any cards with that name. And it has a flashback cost, again, sack a creature, which you don't care about. Yep. Um, <laughs> two Dread Return, those are the reanimate spells that we were talking about earlier. Uh, two colorless, two black, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's flashback cost, sack three creatures. It's worth awesome. noting, too, you're probably never going to actually pay the the mana cost no this. no 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 so you're only <coughs> flashing stuff because it's going to be yeah. in your graveyard when you dredge and then you mm-hmm. get elish norn or a culligan based off of this most of the time yeah or uh, grave troll i was gonna say grave troll probably more often than not yeah. um it could come in i said 12 12 or 14 14 seems fair um yeah <laughs> it's nice uh so two mental misstep also uh kind of some instant play here mm-hmm. so this is an interesting card uh we were talking a while back uh about the things that misstep counters really uh in this deck you don't care about you mentioned thought seize mm-hmm. um because really it's o- the only things it takes that you are afraid of it taking narcomoeba maybe <laughs> like narcomoeba i mean that's it <laughs> yeah like it just doesn't matter yeah um i mentioned that cantrips things like that yep. you can keep people off of a lot of things with it um yep. by cabal therapying into mental misstep you can mm-hmm. sort of see their hand and then make sure that they don't get anything else by cantripping into something good. So yeah. that's one way to look at it. Yeah, so misstep is very <laughs> lucrative. But you're really only hoping to see this in your opening hand. Like, you don't yeah. you don't use it much other time. No. Uh, unmask, another card, uh, with an interesting kind of caveat. You may <laughs> exile a black card from your hand rather than pay its cost. So this is interesting to me in that it's not put into your graveyard yeah ever so you don't want to exile things <laughs> but this is still played over thought season and, and whatever yeah um 
which is it's a curious choice for me um but that is essentially free well that's right? the thing i think because you're not really looking to do things with your mana very often true yeah um it very rarely needs mana like you really don't want or it's not that you don't want lands but you kind of don't care if you have them and so yeah. you're only running 13 some of them i mean bizarre you don't it's not a mana producing no. land so <laughs> like <laughs> Ten yeah, of your really. lands. Well, sorry, and nine of your savage, lands. Salvage is really just to dredge even more. Yeah. So, like, you're basically down to, like, eight lands that actually do yep. anything. <laughs> like, yep. Yep. So, it makes sense. Okay. I mean, <laughs> I, I buy that, yeah. Uh, sorry, it is a hand destruction spell, though. A target player yeah. reveals his or her hand, choose a non-land card from it, discard it. Perfect. Cool. Uh, some other spells. Bridge from below. <clears throat> Naturally, whenever yeah. a non-second creature is put into your graveyard from the battlefield... Bridge from below is in your graveyard. Put a 2-2 black zombie onto the battlefield. Perfect. Yeah, makes sense. Just give value for things that die. Um, uh, where'd we pick up? Uh, blah, blah, blah. When uh, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. When a creature is put into an opponent's graveyard from the battlefield, if bridge from below is in your yard, exile bridge from below. Uh, kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but it's nice for dredge, of course, because you, sure. want, you want those creatures to sack and, and what have you. Um, for Leyline of the Void. Now, this is probably main board a meta call against other dredge decks i don't um, know like i think it's just good <laughs> it is good it's but it's detrimental to dredge for one yeah i mean if you play but this against dredge, storm, storm storm i guess um that's kind of all i'm thinking though right uh i wish i knew more uh punishing oath it hoses punishing okay. fire uh um, the um It'll save you from the land destruction combo. Crucible. Yeah. Yeah. And strip mine. Yeah, I mm. mean, I think it hits enough that you main board it. Okay. Um, also, just being able to play it for free. I mean, because you just auto win against so many decks with it. Not so many, but you do auto yeah, win that's against the thing. a lot. Not against the meta right now, because a lot of it is mentor. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know. I think you, you, you instantly are in a very good position. Um just to against a, a lot probably against yeah. a lot yeah yeah so oh. i like it okay I, that's an argument for it um yeah. i don't know about four but i guess if you're putting a leyline in you probably put four in yeah um interesting but it, if you don't know leyline of the void if it's in your opening hand you can begin it with on, with it on the battlefield uh if a card will be put into an opponent's graveyard from <coughs> anywhere exile it instead Woo. so against you oh lord yeah that's super bad <laughs> it's scary um serum powder the last four cards in this deck four serum powder so this is a card that will never be cast yeah in this deck so on its own vanilla it serves to be uh, artifact ramp mm -hmm. so three colorless tap to add one color to your mana pool it's fine that's really vanilla artifact ramp but <laughs> really bad to be honest however anytime you could mulligan and serum powder is in your hand you may exile all cards from your hand then draw that many cards so yeah this makes mulligans a lot better, potentially. It um, gets you bizarre. Yes. that's So if that's... it's in your hand, <laughs> you will be up a card from mulliganing. Yep. Essentially, you don't lose cards. However, seven cards are exiled, so really you yeah. do lose cards, I should say. Um, but if one of them serum powder, you don't care. Exactly. Uh, that's the only reason this is there. Uh, it. This is probably probably one of those plays that's super smart to do. It always feels a little bad, though. Yeah, I don't know that I... You'd have to play it, though, in this. Because, again, you're hinging on the yep. bizarre, yep. like, no matter what. I mean, that's true. So... There's one card you're hoping to find in your opening hand. You'll do anything to get it. Yeah. Kind of makes sense. And it, it let it be known, then, that most of these cards, there are more than one copy. So you yeah, will yeah. probably not be off of anything other than the Norn Kolagon. Yeah. But that's only in this list. You don't have to play with those. Yeah. You can play with another Icarid and another Golgari Thug if you mm -hmm. want. Those two cards could be gone. Um so serum powder probably doesn't feel that bad if you're playing this deck i think it's um good. yeah yeah it's nice uh so let's talk about the sideboard briefly because sideboards are so circumstantial uh <laughs> barbarian ring that's an interesting one yeah so basically right. what you can do with threshold which you're gonna have most of the time uh, if you don't know threshold is basically if you have seven or more cards in your graveyard you can activate the threshold ability mm -hmm. uh and so if you tap a red and tap uh the barbarian ring you can have it, you sack it, and it has it deal two damage target creature or player, um, either getting in the last few points of damage or getting a timely shock off on a mentor or that, something like that. Yeah, that's my um, big thought, is that this, yeah. I guess, helps against mentor more. It also helps against white weenie. 
and pretty good and uh hate bears yeah which you might run against i just i feel like there would be better cards to do that with like do those things with i don't know though because so for instance if you're against hate bears and they have mm-hmm. folly out your shock it, say you were to run shock because that's the equivalent sure. ability sure like cost two now because of thalia barbarian ring doesn't cost two no matter what but like, consider this it's so hard to cast in this deck you've got eight lands that produce yeah. that red mana so if you side this in you might not even be able to play it and it's I a think, really slow shock at that i uh, yeah but I don't that's know. that's already two mana you're tapping two lands for it yeah that's fair I don't know. I, I'm kind of okay with it, but it is a bit odd. Like, I didn't expect I, to yeah, see it. Yeah, I feel it. weird. The only thing I could think of is, like, you don't lose Barbarian Ring to much. Mm-hmm. Like, this, it's not a card that's countered. Counterable, I should say. You can't counter it. You can't um, discard it most of the time. Mostly it's just straight mine and Wasteland that you're yeah. worried about. I don't, it feels weird to me. <laughs> uh, Chain of Vapor. <laughs> Some other ones. Uh, return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that Permanence controller may sacrifice a land. If the player does, he or she may copy this spell and choose a new target for that copy. Sweet. Yeah, it's a cool card. Yeah. Huge tempo play. Heck yeah. You feel kind of fine if they decide to like to copy that spell. Yeah. They're off of a land. Which I know in vintage doesn't matter a ton, but it could in some matchups. It could, yeah. There are definitely matchups where it matters. That's definitely nice. And heck, if you don't need your lands, bounce more spots. (laughs) Just copy back. Uh, (laughs) One copy of Firestorm as an additional uh, cost to cast Firestorm. Discard X cards. Really good for Dredge. Firestorm deals X damage to each of X target creatures and or players. Seems good. Yes. Nice. (laughs) Uh, Could be a sweeper. Could be a really nice bomb. Ingot Chewer, a four of. Yeah. Hits artifacts. Yep. I mean, that could be why Barbarian Ring is in there, to be able to cast those things better. Sure. And there's more utility with that red mana. So, okay. Sure. That makes more sense, seeing the rest of the sideboard. <laughs> um, yeah, for Ingot Shurer, you evoke it to blow up an artifact. Sweet. There's a lot of artifacts in Vintage, in case you didn't know. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. <laughs> Just on the off chance. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that in a yeah. second. Uh, two more mental missteps, in case you find yourself in a matchup uh, that is very quick and you need some turn yeah. one plays. Uh, two Nature's Claim. Now, this is a great card in Vintage. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. It's controller gains four life. Kind of that evoke ing- ingot truer. Yep. Um, you see it in a bunch of different decks. Again, because artifacts are so rampant. Yeah. Uh, and then two Wisp Mare. Flying, when Wisp Mare enters the battlefield, destroy target enchantment. And it has evoke for one white. So you both enchantment eight. Against Ley Lines? Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you want that. Cool. So, yes, and it... Let it be known that you are a dredge deck, and this is vintage, so people will probably lay line uh, void against yeah. you. So Wisp Mayor probably goes in after every sideboard. Yeah, probably. definitely. I mean, people sideboard for dredge very heavily, um, especially in vintage, because it is such a strong deck in vintage. Oh. Um, oh. And so it's, it's strong everywhere. Dude. It is strong everywhere, but it's especially mm. strong in vintage. Yes, so it's something, so. if you're building a different vintage deck, you should definitely plan for this. Mm. Um, it will be around. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a really good deck. If you're looking to get into Vintage, uh, buy it online first. <laughs> but I would definitely we'll recommend this deck because Dredge is Dredge is one of those mechanics that's like super broken. It's up there with Storm. Yeah. Um, just really broken stuff can happen. It's really, really fun. It's a bit, uh, I don't want to say tricky to play because once you have it down, it's really not that difficult. On the face of it, it looks a bit tricky because you're doing a lot of stuff with the graveyard and it gets a little you know kind of back and forth but uh once you get it down once you've played it a few times it's not actually difficult at all it's pretty straightforward yeah i mean i think for new players definitely dredge is tricky yeah. um but it would it helps to see it played for sure yeah um and yeah as you said once you have it you have it it just kind of flows it's, yeah um there are plenty of choices once you start dredging for a bunch mm-hmm. um you're essentially <clears throat> looking at your graveyard as a second library of cards to do things with, <laughs> yeah yeah um because of all of your flashback spells because of all your dredge stuff mm-hmm. um so you're gonna have a ton of options to choose from mm-hmm. but i think you do that so early it's pretty easy to pick yeah. it up that and another point i wanted to make is dredge is a hard deck to play against because yes. there's not much you can do to disrupt its combo no so when you dredge uh, unless i guess disallow maybe counters i mean technically, i guess yeah but you never see an advantage don't even consider stifle 
stifle it? Stifle you would, maybe. But even so, there's more dredge targets to dredge yeah, with, yeah. so it doesn't it doesn't matter. Once it gets going, it's just like, all right, and there's my there's my graveyard. <laughs> yeah. I can I do mean, plenty of things now. Unless you have graveyard hate, it's really hard to do too exactly. much about this. That's your... I mean, you can sweep the board, good for you. The next turn, they're going to get it all back. So, yeah. like, it just doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> that's the one... Th- that is the reason you see graveyard hate in every sideboard. Yes. Because that's the only way to disrupt dread, really. Yeah. Sure, you can counter a dread return. It's got flashbacks, so what? It just doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's nasty. Yeah. Um, so dredge, super good. Yeah. Very, very good. Final deck. summation. Thank you for the suggestions, yes. by the way. We had a few. If we um, uh if we didn't do dredge justice, if we did it wrong. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Tell I've us never your played dredge a vintage build. dredge deck. Nor um, have I. I've been trying no, to honestly. slowly piece together a modern dredge deck. Um, I'm not 100% there, but I've got a decent portion of it, I guess I would say. But I'd really I'm like curiosity. to actually get get all of this down and, mm. and play it for myself. I really like it. So Yeah, uh, it's cool. fun. It's fun. It feels so good. It's, well, like, now, it's broken as heck. It's super broken. <laughs> um now that we've talked about one of the 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 main stake decks in vintage well uh, not really it's five percent of a it's up smaller there meta. it's up there um check this out. i know i know it's up there though five percent's not not nothing um it ain't monastery of mud <laughs> um all right so let's actually talk about vintage as a whole sure uh just briefly again we usually have our five points for this what is it the history of it what's the current state of vintage how and where can you play it, and then how to actually get good at it. Um, so to bring this up first, what is vintage? Um, if you already know, good. If you don't, it's everything goes. Um, Pres- well, not everything. It's, um, it is every card ever printed that hasn't been restricted or banned. Yes. Um, the ban list is very, very small. Uh, anything mm-hmm. that has to do with anti or conspiracy are all banned. Uh, and then besides that, only three other cards. Chaos Orb, Falling Star and some weird thing Shaharzard Shaharzard Charizard Charizard can't play Charizard Charizard is banned sorry guys yeah Shaharzard (laughs) I've never seen that card before in my life I have um but I never pronounced it correctly okay well um I won't look it up it's Charizard um (laughs) can't play Charizard sorry guys so now and forever that's the banned list the restricted list is a much more extensive list it includes all of the power nine as well as other cards like fast bond windfall things like that you can only play one of um and the reason being those cards are just way too broken (laughs) yeah um but you still do get to play with them you get to have them as a one of and in fact in most decks things like the power nine you will see in most of them not necessarily Mm -hmm. in dredge that's sort of an outlier for this however uh most of the decks are going to be running moxes black lotus uh things like that so yeah just to sort of give you an idea of what it is um as far as the history of vintage it really started in 1995 as a formal format at the time it was considered type one it was not classified as vintage itself however in 2000 it sort of was renamed into vintage Mm. uh in 2004 Basically, up until that point, up until 2004, Legacy and Vintage had basically the same ban list and restricted list. Um, At the 2004 mark, that sort of broke off. They became their own separate lists, and that's sort of where the big split between the formats happened. Um, And that's why now they're very, very different formats. Yeah. Um, They tried to to keep the power of Vintage and Legacy, but make Legacy more accessible viable yeah. for other things they slowed it down a little bit it's like a turn or two slower yeah. than vintage um legacy is very much dependent on the small interactions you get to fight over things a lot and things yeah. like that vintage it's sort of like okay here's my strategy you just have to answer this like it's very there are a lot of nitpicky things that happen in vintage i don't want to frame it as something that's a lot simpler than legacy because it is definitely not mm-hmm. um but The decks are a lot more fine-tuned, a lot faster, and so you get a lot of things happening a lot quicker than you would in Legacy. There's less fighting over things. It's more just doing your stuff. Yeah, Um, There's a lot more goldfish happening. Exactly, exactly. And there are very fast decks that can win on turn one. That's kind of (laughs) normal. Turn one? There are a few, yeah, but a lot of them go on turn two. Yeah. Um, I know Storm usually shoots for turn two. I mean, you can definitely put out your win condition on turn one. Yeah, no problem. You can put out Blight Seal on turn one, but yeah, easy. Um, <laughs> which can happen pretty regularly. Um, so to break down the current format, uh, there's aggro, control, and combo. 
basically what we're looking at is 45%, the majority are going to be aggro decks, mm -hmm. uh, about 39% are control decks, and then 16 or so is combo. Yeah. Um, and so to sort of give you the top decks in each of those, I think the top deck in the format right now is Mud. Oh, yeah. Uh, at 28%. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh. Um, we did a tech on Mud, did we not? I don't know if we did. Not. I don't think the, I the think, Vintage. I think Toolbox Mud. Maybe. Something like that. Um, vintage Mud is super broken. It's well, just Mud in general is just mean. Oh, it is. I mean, it's cheap. <laughs> it's really good. Um, Upkeep, I mean, here's my 20 golems. <laughs> Go. Yeah, like... It's just know. really good. Um, sort of in the same vein, you get Eldrazi aggro. Yeah. Uh, that's also up there. And then the other two aggro decks, red, blue, aggro, and then Merfolk are up there as well. Um, and the control route, <laughs> Monastery Mentor by far at 22% mm -hmm. takes the control route. Monastery Mentor being exceptionally good in vintage because of all the free This spells. is its best format. Yeah. Um, Amox. Triggers prowess. Gets another guy. Like, everything yeah. just becomes so much value yes um oath of druids is also a fantastic control deck uh and a bit of a combo deck um mm -hmm. planeswalker control and land still make up a few of the other biggies um and then for combo the biggest is paradoxal storm no surprise it's storm um yeah paradoxal uh outcome being a new card actually which is really cool to see in vintage because it just goes to show even though they're printing new cards and people feel like sometimes it's a little underpowered you actually can break them and play them in vintage. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> remember that any any interaction that's possible in Magic that might be illegal in your format. Yes, it'll happen somewhere vintage. else. Um, yep. Vintage so, is that place. Yeah, exactly. Um, cool. So Paradoxal Storm, as well as other variations of Storm uh, hit combo. You also see Dredge, which is labeled as a combo deck. It's also sort of on that aggro line, and then Doomsday, uh, which is one of my favorite decks ever. Doomsday, um, sweet. Yeah, we talked about that. So sweet. We did yeah, we did do a tech on uh, Doomsday. So that's sort of a breakdown of where we're at in Vintage at the moment. Uh, again, a super, super powerful format. You're going to see a lot of crazy, crazy things happening. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say if you are looking to get into Vintage, the first thing you need to do is go watch a bunch of gameplays. Probably, um, yeah. That is 100% what you need to do. But we'll get to that in a second. Before, how and where can you actually play it? Well, the easiest place... <laughs> is the most online. cost effective place. so i want to talk about our example from earlier bazaar of baghdad yeah the card is eight hundred dollars uh, yeah. online it's like 70 something cents uh reason being it goes in one deck yeah but the supply yeah in physical paper so small because these cards haven't been printed since the 90s yeah most of vintage cards are on the restricted list not like restricted as in the format as in we will not print these ever again yeah so you're not going to find Reserve them, really. List. That's what I meant. Yeah. You're, you're not going to see them, really, ever, unless you've already got them, unless your friend's like, look at my moxes. <laughs> <laughs> Which happens all the time. Yeah, totally. No, you, you really just don't see it. So yeah. online, you get all these vintage cards that you need to make decks good, but aren't that expensive. Yeah. Because um, they're just not good out, outside of vintage. They also did do a reprint of a lot of stuff only online with Vintage Masters, and so mm -hmm. that sort of dumbed down the cost of a lot of them, which were already relatively cheap, but it made them even cheaper. Uh, you can get dual lands sure. for like a couple bucks, whereas in real life, it's a few hundred. Yep. So, yep. Uh, uh, I would yeah. definitely suggest playing online. Um, there are vintage tournaments out there, but obviously because it's not a very accessible format to a lot of people, you're not going to find them at a local game store, most likely. Yeah. Um, there, unless they're just specified. There are a few in New York that do vintage specific nights. Right. Um, there was a documentary on by Vice on Magic the Gathering. Talked about vintage players. Really? Local game store. Yeah, it's really cool. You should watch oh. it. It's only about 26 minutes, but it's oh. really good. Well, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then go to New York or just play online. <laughs> There's... um. <laughs> these brothers that they followed around for a little while that have you know i might have seen that you know what i'm talking about i think so they're, Starts, t they're like in their house and they're yeah. like we have vintage night and then food and stuff like they're that. italian yeah they're italian if you go to a house yeah yeah you're gonna get great food it's <laughs> a cool document and great vintage cards <laughs> and they're absolutely right like they are absolutely yeah. right um no but vintage is a very strong format i would recommend online though as mm -hmm. the place definitely to start um just because you don't want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on no. a deck <laughs> maybe you do if you've got that disposable income go for who it who might say encourage don't you to money. do it do um it. but just yeah. yeah um and in the same vein how are you gonna get good 
play online. Um, this, well, as well as Legacy, um, are the two formats I would suggest most watching gameplay, uh, just as much as you would play. Mm-hmm. I think other formats, that's always any format you play, that's always going to help you. However, before you even pick up a deck, mm-hmm. just get the hang of how the decks work, how the games interact, and how things go, because that's going to help you so much mm-hmm. when you actually sit down to play your first game. Um, these are very, very complicated decks in a lot of situations. Yes, yeah, definitely. The interactions do matter quite a lot, just as in Legacy. And so you really, really For have sure. to be careful about that and make sure that you know what you're doing. And you'll learn along the way. Um, but playing online is definitely the best way to start. Yeah, so yeah, that's fair. That would be where I would go. Yeah, there are, I think, um, for me, watching gameplay is the biggest. Uh, I said it before in our last format breakdown, um, but here specifically, there are force of will counters specific things against specific decks Mm -hmm. misstep is the same way uh like kevin pointed out earlier i mentioned um when we were talking countering a thought seed force of will or Mm -hmm. with a misstep in the dredge deck but maybe you don't want to you don't do that (laughs) because they hit stuff it just goes in your yard thanks yep i'll play it later or i'll dredge with it yep that's fine but that's a mistake that i would have made had I just been playing online. <laughs> so you would much rather save it for your brainstorm, yeah. your pre-ordering, what have you. And you'll learn as time goes on sure. while you play Vintage uh, exactly how everything goes. Yeah. But that's basically the breakdown of Vintage as of right now. Yeah, it's Magic's oldest format. It's Magic's, um, I don't want to say confusing or fringe. That's not <laughs> that's not fair to Vintage because it no. it's very fun and it's really cool to see like how far magic has come yeah um especially like all right looking at packs from alpha and beta and and what have you (laughs) the creatures man yeah the creatures they were so good they were so creative (laughs) they were flavorful bingo uh yeah (laughs) it goes that they used to print really like not great creatures and really powerful spells not necessarily on purpose that's just kind of how yeah it's just how it worked out um and that's definitely it's hard to scroll with this thing i'm using my pad okay it's tricky that's fine it's tricky um but yeah uh anything else you want to say about vintage no um it is a very very fun and expensive format but if you have the funds go for it it's yeah. super super fun Heck so yeah. that's about it if you do have any questions about vintage though please let us know uh in the comments section yeah we'd love to to hopefully answer those we're not by any means vintage expert <laughs> um <laughs> and in fact, we don't have the funds to be vintage experts, no, no, but no. Um, I I really do watch quite a lot of vintage and legacy and not saying that that means I know everything because it does not. But um, I do enjoy it quite a lot yeah. and I I try to keep up with the deck lists and things like that. For I, mean, I said part. you got me into the eternal formats besides modern, but really <laughs> vintage and legacy you, you helped me get on board with. I do what I can. Um, so let's talk about the top eight. There was a Grand Prix. There was. Y'all. Where was it? Burning Ham. I love Burning Ham. Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham. Uh, yeah, it was a uh, it was a modern GP, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, modern being, again, my favorite format. Yeah, same. One of yours. Probably if not the favorite. The same. Uh, yeah, it, it's sweet. So, uh, so I didn't. my favorite that I can play. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> I didn't catch any of the gameplay, unfortunately. I had stuff going on. I caught a bit um i watched on twitch for a little bit i didn't get to see too much but it was it looked like a great game i did see yeah. death shadow versus eldrazi aggro which was cool that's a point we're going to talk about kevin glad you brought Yay. it up um so let's before we get into the top eight actually talk about some of the things we learned from the meta this weekend yeah uh, wizards makes some of these points in their uh, article on the coverage uh but we'll just we'll gloss over it briefly uh so one of the biggest things we saw was while death shadow was still the premier deck in so much as it was everywhere yeah there were 30 something on the second day okay which doesn't seem like a lot considering in standard you can have something like 50 70 100 decks of the same kind on the second day um this is modern so a bunch of stuff is open and there you go um but right alongside it cards like eldrazi aggro um the word what do they call that deck um titan shift no, no, no. That's not it. That's not it. No, Eldrazi Aggro is definitely Eldrazi Tron. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Titan Shift's totally different. Titan Shift is a completely different 100% deck. Hundred different deck. Shut up, Will. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, there were way more bigger guys in this tournament than people were yeah. expecting. Um, the meta shifted definitely away from Death Shadow. <laughs> Titan shifted. Hey, there was a Titanic shift. <laughs> 
away. You're welcome, from guys. This is why we know you watch because of this. <laughs> for our, our for disjointed our puns. coverage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that being said, Death Shadow <laughs> naturally still top aided. Um, George Channing's Grixis Death Shadow list, which isn't really different at all from any other Death Shadow list. Standard Death Shadow list. <laughs> kind of goes back to the same. Death Shadow's really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's so good. I love this there deck. It is. I mean, this is the deck, so um, I don't have every single card in this list, but I do have a Death Shadow deck that I've been putting together, again, sort of slowly but surely. Um, I've got the majority of it now, and there's, like, very few cards that I'm missing out of this exact list. Like, yeah. I think, and I wasn't using this list when I was, like, building it and putting things and trying things together. I had a yeah. base list that I went off of and then sort of picked and choose some of the cards that I didn't necessarily want in there. Sure. It ended up being, like, the exact same as this deck. Like, it's just... I mean, I mean that goes that kind of goes back to uh, not a lot of card slots, yeah, being available spell slots, I guess, to to play with. True. Um, Death Shadow has a few, but there's not a ton you want to change just because it's been boiled down and tuned so well that it's, it's re- really it's really found good. a stride. It's kind of perfect right now. Yeah. Uh, maybe until they ban Death Shadow, we'll see. Um, <laughs> that's a good segue. Do you think uh, I was going to ask this question at the end? Okay. Maybe we'll save it for the end. No, we'll do it now. No, we'll do it now. Death Shadow banning what you think i don't think so um my initial thought would have so if you had asked me like a month ago i would have been like yeah probably Mm -hmm. um i think this top eight proves that it doesn't need to be banned um while it was in the top eight as a one of deck that won um there's so many other decks and varieties of decks that are in this top eight which make me think okay death shadow is a very good deck and Mm -hmm. it's probably going to top eight most of the time however it's not unbeatable by any means. Very true. Um, and honestly, there are so many things that actually get rid of Death Shadow. Like, yeah. I know Bolt doesn't, but you can Fatal Push, and you can Path, and I mean, there's a lot of answers for it. Like, it's not, it's a creature, so it dies. Like, it's, yeah. you know, and I mean, I get that it's very fast, it's a very quick deck to do some of these things, but removal's cheap, people. So yeah. And it's cheap for a reason. And- yeah that's really the reason is because there are there are really tough monsters creatures out there Mm -hmm. who do things like death shadow does like take over format but they die to something right yep unless they say indestructible unless they say blightsteel colossus at the top they just (laughs) they just get blown up yes um so it kind of makes sense and that's a perfect segue into the winner of the of the tournament yep i can't say his name but uh i can say uh, his deck I'll, I'll attempt good luck of course that i has two it's got an umlaut over it so i don't know like what to do there look i'm gonna um, lebrian's leash <laughs> lebron look Le- lebrains lebron i'm so sorry dude whatever he played burn he's a foreign player <laughs> he played burn really hard to say uh, anyone with burn people yeah burn is on an upswing because it's also in standard right now. well mono red i was gonna say it's not burned uh, so much. Right, right, right. Um, but this is speaking of like like slotted standard decks, decks that don't change that much, this is almost exactly a Naya Burn list. Yes, but I will say an interesting include for me that I see in Cube a lot, but I don't actually see in constructed deck lists is Shrine of Burning Rage. This used to be in a lot more. It used to it, be. Yeah. You're right. I'm glad that it made a resurgence. It's a four of in this, and I think that's great. Deals a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, I think it just, it feels kind of slower in that you have to, of course, get it on the field. But yeah. as soon as you start casting your burn spells, you are you are holding up a bomb. Yeah. Right? And that's exactly what you want to do. Yeah, it's um, perfect. You're just, ha- you, you hold a bunch of reach with this with this card, which exactly. is great. A four of is interesting. I don't know if I would have done it. I don't know um, that I would have I think it. it's a gutsy call, but obviously it worked. <laughs> like, far be it for me Ooh. to say, hey. Excuse me. I'm God. sorry, guys. <laughs> um. But the links, of course, uh, are all on Wizards' website, so I'm yes. not going to talk in length about the, the deck list, but no, no. just to prove it's pretty much standard. Goblin Guide, Swift Spear, Lava Spike, Rift Bolt, Boros Charm, Bolt, Helix, yeah. Blaze, Skullcrack, Hexhether, Hexhether. Like, it's it's a standard burn list. Yeah, guys, It's great. I'm glad it won. Don't be afraid of Modern because there's a scary little ghost in there. Is <laughs> a deck a that what I'm really he? excited about. Actually, Do yeah. what? What is Death Shadow? Yeah, is he a horror? Uh, Ava- he's an avatar. Avatar, um, huh. the last Airbender. 
Um, don't you don't you say that. A deck that I'm really happy about that most people won't be happy about, but that was in the top eight is Lantern Control. Oh heck yeah, that's another one I want to talk about. Uh, I really like Lantern Control, guys. There you go. Um, <laughs> We talked about it last week. I think last week. Ellen Modern, Modern Week, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it was last week. Um, it's updated. I mean, <laughs> heck yeah. G- good for Lancer. See if you can find that gameplay. It's really, <laughs> probably will be really boring. I was going to say, it probably won't be very <laughs> fun Actually, to watch. I say that. Um, Abzan Midrange was in there. Yes. Black Green Rock. That's interesting. We haven't talked about that yet. Black um, Green Rock. Yeah. Weird. So... Modern's kind of wide open. It kind of stayed that way. Yeah, yeah, I'm in the same boat as Kevin in that Death Shadow. I think for Will a month ago would have been a very scary prospect. Sure, um, but it's kind of not that bad. A deck that you're really happy about is Counter Company. It made it into the top eight. Combo City, um, Titan Shift, also, <laughs> which I think is a really cool one to see. I was gonna not bring up Counter Company because I thought you'd get mad at me. No, no, I'm glad. I'm happy it's in the top eight because I do think it's a solid, solid deck. It's um, the coolest. It is one of the coolest ever. decks. It's up there. Um, I'm really stoked to see Titan Shift though, just because it's like a weird combo deck. But I'm so happy it worked. I love Valakit. I think it's cool. That's fine. Um, the last one is Bant Nightfall Humans, which mm-hmm. is like the weirdest name for me. I was like really confused at first. Well, no, nah, it's Bant Colors. It's Bant Colors, We're Knight of the Reliquary, human-based. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, but it's really, really good. Reflector yeah, Mage making its play in modern. Kind of a junk deck. Um, yes. You get your tempo Bant plays. Junk. True. You get your tempo plays with uh, Reflector Mage. You get value, Champion of the Parish, Absence Pilgrim for rent. Like, it's, it's just junk stuff. So, yeah. what's weird to me is this deck doesn't when i look at it like mm-hmm. there are some of the cards i'm like okay yeah definitely modern playable gonna see those in modern and then there's stuff like retreat to coral helm that i just didn't really expect to see in modern i'm not saying it's a bad card it's a great card i just didn't really expect it you know sure i just i don't know it seems a little weird to me but it, it's junk like so it makes sense i mean you get a lot of options with that, right? So you do. Yeah, you can yeah. untap your uh, your ramp, guys. Sure. Um, get extra ramp out there. Just play a bunch of things. I mean, with collecting, it's really good. With but... collecting company, anything that's green weenies, like yeah, just gets super good. You play a bunch of free stuff. I mean, free stuff is good in case you. Didn't uh, know. Heck yeah, counter company only works so well because of collected company. Yeah. Right. Like you don't technically need collected company for the effects to go off. But it gets you the effects. Yeah, it gets you there so much quicker. So yep. I mean, that makes a lot of decks more, <laughs> way more viable. Um, company is a card that some people might think about banning. I don't think you should ban company personally. I mean, I hope you, they don't, because I like freaking counter company. If it was, if it needed to be banned, it would have been way more prominent in the top eight. Um, counter company being the namesake deck for it right now. There's obviously a lot of decks that run it, but. Counter Company being Name, the... namesake, sure, but like a lot of decks use. Yeah, a lot of decks do. A lot of decks did not make it to the top eight. <laughs> Specifically, like two th- oh, one thousand seven hundred fifty. Hold on, seven. <laughs> there was like over. Uh, oh, you actually players. had the number. I was really confused. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's a really good card. It enables a lot, but it doesn't win you the game. All right. I. I don't think it does. Anyway, moving on to our final segment. Um, We're actually making pretty good time, so let's try and uh, hopefully keep good time on these episodes, because normally... I was worried that we would be at, like, the two-hour mark when we're Well, okay, so this first episode is a little bit weird for us. Yeah. Um, It's come off a strange week of scheduling, a strange week (laughs) of stuff going right, stuff going wrong. We kind of just sat down after a meeting that we already scheduled Yeah. to say, let's change a lot that we talked about in this meeting that we were going to talk about <laughs> yeah river hopo um and then we just decided to do this today yeah this is sort of on a whim so this will feel weird it made sense but for... get a lot cooler yeah um, that's the plan um, so bear with us um kevin you want to talk about our sponsor yes uh grand slam comics and collectibles you've heard us talk about them on literally every episode um yes <laughs> they have and... helped us out tremendously uh they've done a lot for the channel we encourage you to go check them out their website as well as their facebook if you'd like to follow them on facebook is in the description oh, my. um oh nice so 
we encourage you to check them out hang out with clamp over there he's the one that sort of runs things uh as well as some of our other friends and uh just see what they got for you they've got everything from magic pokemon sports cards comics anything you could need uh and if they don't have it they will work with you to get it um a lot really of pokemon good about that. let's say that they're a yes. great store for pokemon things they have pokemon knights they do pokemon uh, box breaks and giveaways tournaments uh, everything so if you're into that or looking to get into that that's a great game for kids to pick up it's a lot yeah. simpler than magic um it's kind of fun to play i've played a few times with my little brother not my favorite i like magic way more but <laughs> yeah that being said it's a cool it's, card game it's good um so with these packs though sponsored by grand slam we do have our gold cards mine is fraying sanity which i did not get i got pride sovereign oh nice yeah yeah, 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 yeah. which i wouldn't really i don't think i'd pick I, it's a cat tribal. I, well, okay, because what? it creates other tokens, yeah, I would pick it. Fair enough. It's an engine and a bomb. Yeah, okay, fine. I'd take it. Yeah, I really, really wanted, so, okay, in all honesty, I just really wanted to take the river hoopy. Ah, Hopa, Hopo. Hopo. Just because it's adorable. Sorry, it's Hoopo. Uh, it's Ho so Hoopo. cute. I mean. Well, pick it next. It'll wheel. It's got a little. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. It's got a little mohawk. Yeah, it is a really cool looking it's, card. I, I will and it's admit. card draw. It's actually, I would play it if I was in blue green. <laughs> oh, no, I think you're absolutely right. It's <laughs> an interesting one. What'd you get? So, uh, really tricky pack. My gold card, Torment of Hailfire, a card I'm less and less excited about every day. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm off the train. I am not off, I'm off the train, but I'm running beside the tracks. Uh, okay. I want to see where the train goes, but I'm, I'm going to watch. <laughs> okay uh yeah i think it could be broken in stuff that uses channel specifically <laughs> we talked about in the cube we had that channel torment super good Whew. yeah oh man every one life you pay they have to do one of three very terrible things so if they take the life oh, you man. just basically tripled the damage that you took it was really cool uh, yeah. it's oh man yeah it's super good a plus a really plus. good card so okay that out of the way though well we can talk we can talk about that after the crack pack since we've got time we yeah we got this to be longer. Time. um so i have four really good picks to try and make here um so i think i'll line them from like best to worst Bloodwater entity or worst to best i'll say Bloodwater entity is build around card it's a gold card first pick which i'm fine with other people might not be um it is a build around though <laughs> So, Flying and Prowess, 2-2 two, two guy for 3. It could get really scary and really good. Angel of Condemnation was my rare. Uh, 2 Carlos, 2 White, Flying and Vigilance for 4. Uh, with some Maybe. sweet bounce effects. Uh, yeah. It's really nice. I think that's what I would take. <laughs> it's it's so it's so good. But this is also a build-around card for me. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's so tricky. Um, it's just really strong, though. It is very strong, and again, strong consideration. These are neck and neck. Unsummon. You probably don't first pick Unsummon. No. Nope. <laughs> um, I just love it. Yeah. Uh, and I'd rather not play against it. Um, however, I also got a Dream Stealer as a foil. <laughs> Two colorless, one black menace. Whenever Dream Stealer deals combat damage to a player, that player discards that many cards and eternalize for six. Really good and limited. Not good and constructed. Um. I've found it to be really bad and constructed. How many decks have been constructed, buddy? I've looked at a lot of lists, and I don't think it's got its niche yet, but I don't think it's necessarily bad. Uh, I think a gift of the God Pharaoh deck, Ooh. maybe. Ooh. Eternalize everything, even though it's already got eternalize. Yeah, yeah. Hear me out. You get to do that for free. I mean, it's super good. A bunch of stuff. Dream Stealer is awesome. Um, it's a tricky one. I think I'm gonna go with the Angel. I think that's the pick. It gets you so much stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah. reach, vigilance, holding something up is great. The effects are awesome. Um, they're so wordy. Go read them. Uh, yeah, Angel yeah. of Condemnation. Uh, that's such a good card. I think I'm going to go with the Angel. I think it's a good pick. Yeah. Um, white is a strong color to be in. Uh, it is this, very this format, anything goes really, but. White got a little bit worse with less Avonquette packs, um, solely because you had. I think it did. No, well, yeah, that's, there were things that's, like that's fair. what Gus yeah. Walker or something mm -hmm. like that, which was just premium. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things that you're not going to get as many of. Yeah. because there's just less on on cat packs. That's not to say it's a bad color to be in. In fact, all of the colors right now are actually pretty good to be in. You gonna rip up this on someone too? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Woo! How about this one? man? 
<laughs> um, <laughs> um, really quick, let's go over the cube. Um, just very briefly. So basically, what we did is a two-headed giant cube. Um, it was this the what was it? The podcast peeps. Podcast versus peeps team stream. Versus team stream. Um, team stream subbing a player for Alex. Yes, so we had our good friend Andrew, who you might remember from this cup, and these shirts we're not wearing. Um, <laughs> yeah, I lost mine. Kevin's the latest. Mine's in the wash. Uh, uh, so forgive me, Kevin did chores. <laughs> I did chores today. Um, but yeah, so basically he's done a lot for us, and we thought we'd hang out with him, do a cube with him, so he represented Alex on Team Stream. Also, he's a really fun dude. It's not like... Uh, well, yeah, he no, no, printed no. He is, shirts. Let's hang out. With we him have again. to hang out with Andrew. <laughs> no, he's no, a great no. Guy, he so. is a really good guy. Yeah. Um, we will absolutely have him back. We decided. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I talked to him about that. We're gonna do it again. So, Sweet. um, I did uh want to mention very quickly there was a stream on YouTube, mm-hmm. uh, of basically us doing the drafting side of things and then also doing a little bit of the gameplay. I don't think we got through all of the gameplay, but it is up on YouTube mm-hmm. if you want to go review it and just hang out. Um, fair yeah. warning. Normally we try and keep things PG. Yep. Um, if you are a child or a parent of a child, <laughs> um, not that it was super bad, but no, just it's, you know, just be wary. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, it's, you can say not safe for work. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a cube magic live gameplay. Some swears come out. Sure. Um, that being said, it's nothing. Uh, it's nothing. Ter- it's not like absolutely. We were, yeah, it wasn't so every other word that, or but anything, like, but. Just to let you know ahead of time if you do yeah, want to go if you watch feel, it. If you feel some type of way about yeah, that. Which, so. no judgment, but no, no, fair warning not. as well. Um, normally we try and keep PG, but that's just a fun game thing, so we we let a few things slip. But um, it was very fun. We did a draft first, uh, played three games, yeah, and then yeah. did an actual sealed thing after that. Kevin, you want to talk about how uh, things went? <sighs> okay, so sealed went great. Um <laughs> start with the first thing okay so we drafted um mm-hmm. it was an eight man cube we only had four so we actually drafted the entire thing yeah and our decks i think individually would have been good yes um so i drafted storm i sort of forced it a bit um but i did a get lot. most of the cards the only thing i didn't get was yagmas will but mm-hmm. i did have past in flames so i did have the flashback from the from the graveyard it was just a little bit too expensive um I also didn't have all of the fast ramp that I would have liked, and so that sort of hindered me a bit. Sure. Um, the first game, I did Mind's Desire for, like, five. Which seems good. Uh, four of the five were all lands. <laughs> These specifically. And the last one was a all turnabout, islands. which didn't do a dang thing. <laughs> so felt really bad. Uh, yeah. Game two, game one, we lost. Mm-hmm. You drafted, like, a control deck style? Nope, sure didn't. Well, so- combo deck. My deck had three big combos in it. Yes. Splinter Twin, Tinker, yeah. and uh, Channel X stuff. Channel Hailfire. Torment. Yeah. That's, that was my big one, uh, which I didn't end up running um, because it would, probably would have been too hard to cast. Too, it was his only green card. But I really wanted to. Um, it would have made for some really cool stuff to happen, but it's... Yeah, we win. That's the well, cool thing. Um, we didn't win. Game one or two? No, we got we got O2'd, So we uh, got demolished. Yeah. Um, game three we did win because, as sort of a sub theme to the storm deck, I had Leovold into Fairy's Puzzle Box. Turns out that wins you games, but it's not very fun to win games that way. <laughs> um, you literally just yeah. sit there and like you do your stuff on your turn. You pass the turn and they're like, I can't do it, and then pass the turn back. Like, that's literally how the game played out. Yep. Um, we did that for, like, five or six turns, and then they conceded. <laughs> that's, it's, it's a puzzle box. It's, like, yeah. yeah, there's a reason Leovold's banned in Commander. Um, yeah, it's really mean. Um, it's really mean. So, yeah, uh, our, our draft did not go so well as, as a unit, as, yes. as uh, the podcast peeps. However, Sealed was pretty good. Sealed was um, great. Sealed was fun. Uh, it was a 2-1. It was a final yes. record. Yeah, we won 2-1 on that one. Um, I drafted blue green ramp. Uh, you made, made, you yeah, don't draft. I made, excuse don't me. draft the old Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, we put our card pools together because yeah. that's what you do. And oh, well, let's talk about what they drafted though. Uh, what they drafted or what they made? What they drafted. Okay. Andrew was Orzov weenies with a bunch of swords, pretty, which was pretty good. It was pretty good. And then Parks, the all star, <laughs> yeah, reanimator. Yeah, he his deck works so well, yeah, which because. Well, no one drafts reanimator and parts like i'm gonna do it no because no one takes the thing okay so here's the thing 
I posted about it the day of or the day before we did the, the cube before. draft. Yeah. I posted a picture of Reanimate and Entomb because I was like, nobody drafts this, so I'm going to make a joke post about it, how nobody drafts it. Parks commented on it and said, hey, I'm going to force it. And I'm like, great, we'll see how that goes. Thinking, okay, he's probably not actually going to. He's going to force Storm because it's Parks. Yeah. Turns out, no, nah, he actually did force Reanimate. Heck yeah. Which means he actually just took Reanimator. He didn't have to force it at all. No, because yeah. nobody ever takes Reanimator. Right. Um, yeah, it's and pretty good. It's yeah, it's freaking awesome. It was really good. Um, uh, which is what I played in our sealed event. Yes, good segue. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you did play Reanimator, yeah. which worked out pretty well. It um, did. I had the green blue ramp. Uh, had a lot of really good high costing stuff mm -hmm. like Karn and Ugin, um, mm -hmm. Crater Hoof. What else? I don't know. And I had so one of the all star cards in that deck, weirdly, was Nissa. Um mm -hmm. which Actually, isn't a yeah. card that I would like really consider all that powerful in cube, but holy crap, she was great. Thank okay. you. Um I mean, and I mean she just worked out really well because I had all the weenies and then I could just pump them for nothing basically. Well that's the thing. She's perfect in a little guy's deck. Yeah. And if you ever have a bunch of little guys, just throw her in. So yeah. It was she great. makes more little dudes or she makes them all tough. Yep, so. uh, which worked to keep us from dying. Um, which it did to a good... Yeah, yeah. it did it well. Um, Parks had an upheaval deck. God. So it actually didn't hinder me too badly <sighs> because I was green, blue ramp, and I had some signets and things that I could get out, but it was rough. <sighs> Against you, it was particularly rough. I hate that card. It's so good. No, it's awful it's too good um <laughs> i hate that card no it's great Ugh. um and then uh yeah. andrew drafted it was green red like gruel aggro correct yeah gruel aggro channel fireball yeah he had channel stuff. fireball and channel bane fire i believe mm -hmm. too correct um so very much just an aggro sort of burn mm -hmm. swing in deck um yeah. it was really good though it did a heck ton of damage to us for sure oh yeah um so it was really good uh, but again, we won two one in the sealed event. Lots of fun. Yeah. Um, we uh, we will probably make the cube and have it somewhere online for you to see, yeah. or at least a version of it. Yeah, we've got a mana stack account now. Um, yes. Shout out to a previous episode where we said we used mana stack to make our decks. Yes. Uh, mana stack is awesome. So yeah, they are. Um, it's a very simple but very useful tool. Yes, and it's um, pretty. It is. It looks good. It easier looks to use than tapped out. It is cleaner than tapped out. No yeah. offense to tap out, but they. I know definitely that's sort of the like it. staple of making mm -hmm. that stuff. But mana stack really doing great yeah. work. Um, Absolutely. We plan to use it for all of our deck lists, which we will when we talk about deck lists. We'll put them in the description yeah. um, for anything that we make. So, uh, yeah, that's yeah. it's gonna be great. So briefly, good segue. I wanted to update on that um, as kind of a, a final little. Yeah. Segment, we'll tag here. Uh, torment. You still loving it? I like it. I don't. That's fine. So, I almost bought the pieces to finish out the deck that I made. I didn't yet, but I thought about it. Here's... I was like, no, I want to buy cube stuff instead. I don't like it in a control <laughs> deck mm -hmm. because I tested my deck a little bit. Um, whenever I was holding Torment, there were tons of things i would have rather done yeah and it was just a dead card which i know in a control deck you hold on to your bombs a lot but at no point was it ever enough okay you know it was never it was crippling sure but it wasn't my that's fine powerhouse that i needed to be in a deck like kevin's in a deck that runs channel or something like that <laughs> that you can exploit torment yeah i, I think, think then you it absolutely do it there i'm positing that i don't think in standard or modern potentially torment is super viable i think modern I know, is the place it might i know that there's a deck that that has some torments yeah that did pretty well yeah um i think it's like a fringe tier two mm -hmm. brew deck now i could be wrong and there's probably another build going around or being made that could be better maybe but anything with access to channel it's yeah. it's a strict upgrade from fireball from bane fire from any x spell yeah like that that combo is nuts. It's insane. Yeah. Um, it is a very powerful card. The ceiling mm -hmm. is very high with it, but as we've talked about before, the floor mm -hmm. is very low. Um, mm -hmm. So Yeah, right? You bring that back around. Um, mm -hmm. But it is a very powerful card. I intend to uh, continue on with the bug deck. Oh, good lord. 
Sorry. Anyway, bug, bug stuff, yeah. The bug deck. Um, I do want to test it and buy those pieces and actually test it out and see how it goes. Um, <laughs> in gold fishing it, it seemed to do fairly well. Um, but I do think there's some changes to be made still. Sure. So. I mean, Taylor's and cuts are, you know. Yep. Those happen pretty much at every length of a deck's inception. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Torment. Uh, Interesting. I, I, kind of, I, I get it. Yeah. I kind of get it now, which is a bummer. It is a bummer because it's a cool card. I'm excited about it still. Oh, my God. Um, so cool. Oh my God. All right. So, here's the deal, guys. This was the first episode of the new schedule and the new format. The new we format. hope that it went well. Um, if yes. you have any opinions on it, leave them in the comment section or email us or contact us in the many ways that you can. Um, all of the links to all of that stuff is in the description. Yeah. We do plan to have a website out, as we already mentioned, very soon, mm. um, which you can use to check out articles. You can subscribe to us there. Um, we'll have everything linked there as well. Um, so we hope that that'll be useful to you and mm -hmm. that you'll enjoy those articles and enjoy that content. Um, as well as some of the other new content that we've got, cracker packs, things like that. So interesting things. Um, yeah, yeah. Busy seasons in our lives coming up. So this very busy. Will probably be easier, potentially better for everybody. Yeah. Um, exactly. So we hope that yeah. it works out. We hope the quality is upped a little bit for you guys. Uh, and I think that's basically it. Uh, we do want to mention last minute. Um, also, we already mentioned at the top of the episode, but the Instagram giveaway is still going on. Two days left. Um, to enter, we will pick on Friday. So if you would like to win some free Hour of Devastation packs, that's pretty uh, good. I mean, all you have to do is repost the post and tag us, and that's it. So Piece of cake. Yep, cake. super easy, cake and you pieces. can get free stuff. So Nice. That was good. That's my uh, favorite, like, uh, foreign, like, bastardizing of, a, of an American phrase. Really? Right? Like, piece of cake. It was cake pieces! <laughs> I was a Russian guy in a play, and that's what I said. That was one of my lines. I wish I had known you then. No, you don't. No, I wish I had. All right. All right. Um, <laughs> I was pretty much the same, only um, shorter. Yeah. My hair was bigger. Yeah. Same. And I took myself really seriously. I'll say that. I still Probably. do that. I know, it's so cute. <laughs> I'm going to do good things. Um, No. Uh... <laughs> I think that's it though. Yeah, guys, I think um, we're done. I think it's huge well, thank you to our sponsor and a huge thank you to all of you for hanging out with us, however you're doing it on the podcast app, on YouTube, wherever. Stealing your stuff a little bit. Um you care? do it, man. But uh yeah, huge thank you guys. We really appreciate the support. Uh comment and like if you feel so inclined. But we will Actually. see you a week from now on Wednesday with the next episode of the podcast. Nice. Until then, guys, we're gonna get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. And this has been It Resolves. Then it resolves. Then it resolves. Then it resolves.